Thank you very much, uh, Senator Cortez Masto. Senator Smith. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, and uh, thank you, Senator Cortez Masto, for those great questions. And thanks to all of you for being here. I'm so glad to be with you. Um, so, you know, as I was listening to all of this, I'd start by first, we have a, I want to talk mostly about the, um, the criminal problems that we have around um, drug trafficking, but I, I also just want to acknowledge that we also have a severe mental health crisis, um, behavioral health crisis that um, we need to be looking at as well. And um, that's because to my mind, um, substance use disorder is a, is a disease. It's not, you know, the, the, the fact that you have that is a, is a health challenge that needs to be addressed. And I want to just note that, um, I mean, there are just so far too few resources and tools available to address that and to address it in the context of the generational trauma and um, that we know is driving um, so much of that. Um, you know, there is a very important piece of um, um, legislation that we passed called the Native Behavioral Health Access Improvement Act. Okay, so this, this is legislation that is built on something that we passed, which is the um, the special diabetes program and modeled on that special diabetes program is this behavioral health program that would um, allow for tribes to be able to use their best knowledge and their um, sovereignty to be able to understand how to put together programs that are going to be able to address those um, um, uh, that mental health challenge. So I want to just draw attention to that because I think it's important. Um, but this crisis is also, as we've been hearing from many of you, the result of this legal quagmire where drug traffickers, ex they exploited, as you're saying, um, as you're saying, uh, Chair Azure, to keep opioids flowing into tribal communities without any accountability. So take the Red Lake Nation in northern Minnesota. Um, Minnesota is a... Um, Public Law 280 state, Red Lake Nation is not under Public Law 280, so it's a closed reservation. And what happens there is that they repeatedly pick up the same drug traffickers who are not native, they then take those folks to the border. Those folks are then picked up by county or federal law enforcement. And a week later, those folks are right back there again doing exactly the same crime. It is a revolving door that there is no end to and no accountability for. So this question of how to address the need for criminal jurisdiction on tribal lands is important. And we've, you know, it's, it's gotten a lot more complicated following some of these Supreme Court decisions that we're, that we're dealing with. And as, we, as you have been saying, um, those complications have been exploited um, by uh, these um, criminal networks that are trafficking fentanyl and other drugs. So I'm going to um, maybe I'm going to ask this question to you, Chair Hilari, because I think that Senator Cantwell was getting this at, at this a little bit. Um, can you, if you think about what we accomplished with that special criminal jurisdiction for missing and murdered indigenous people um, on reservations so that there was that, you had that special criminal jurisdiction, can you speak to how that has been working, what you see as the, the strengths of that and anything that we can learn for what we could do if we were able to extend it to um, drug trafficking, for example? Yeah, absolutely. I, I think that's uh, that's a great Great idea, and I uh, just want to add on to, to some of the things that you you mentioned. The um, uh, we were reminded by uh, by some of our elders that this mental health crisis and fentanyl crisis is one and the same. Right. And so um, it, it it is a holistic, comprehensive approach that is needed to to address it. And I, I also uh, you mentioned two weeks that somebody is uh, taken to the border, handed over to other jurisdiction. And then you see them two weeks later. Well, for us, try two hours later. Yeah, uh, we've went to uh, we're a sovereign nation, and we have to do what is in the best interest of our people. And so, when we when we go to a, a drug known drug home where there's known drug activity, known drug dealing, and we get them off of the reservation, I do want to mention we also have MOAs with our our county as well, which allows us to mm -hmm. at least uh, uh, enforce. But then we hand them over to. Uh, the county authorities, and then uh, two hours later, they are hitchhiking back onto the reservation, and it, it's an ongoing, ongoing issue. So I, I think that that would be an absolutely great idea. Uh, that, along with our ability to, um, uh, if there's a way we can have special prosecutors that we can prosecute ourselves, because mm -hmm. uh, that's another big barrier is that uh, we uh, uh, can federal 
prosecute them federally, but you know, who's going to take up a case for something that is right. could be seen as a small, you know, crime compared to the vast amount of, of crime that, that can happen in this world. Uh, so I, we, we would be fully uh, supportive of something like that. Uh, it would just be a matter of uh, narrowing down the, uh, the details <coughs> of how that would work with um, VAWA. Yeah, um, I really appreciate that. We are working on legislation to accomplish that, and I think that the the the, the feedback that you're giving us, which is you need we need resources to be able to um, do the um, accountability, but we also need jurisdiction. As we, and we've learned from VAWA, we've learned from that from the, from the extensions that we did in VAWA how that can work, and I think we should put that learning into action. Thank you, <coughs> thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Senator Smith, Senator Lujan. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, 